Hey guys, it's ISO here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get rank one through six spellaments really fast. First, I'm gonna show you like the three different methods, and you know, then I'll explain you why my preferred method is better and how you can do it, and different like tips that you can uh, use along the way to make the whole process faster. So let's get straight into it. All right, guys. So first things first, what do I mean by rank one through six spellaments? I mean the first like few trainable spells that you can get for your school and other schools that's what i mean for example rank one corresponds to thunder snake rank two corresponds to lightning bats then you know obviously storm shark kraken stormzilla and triton these are the dropped spellaments from these respective worlds for rank one through six spellaments obviously you know you have spellaments like berry surprise which only drops from like golden key bosses and stuff but i'm talking about the farmable ones you know the ones easy to get the ones you can train for other schools and stuff so first things first the first method is the cantrip chest method, which is a chest that essentially has three like green lights on it, you could say. And essentially what you need to do is have three different characters or three different people uh, use the touch cantrip on that uh, on that chest, right? So where is it? I have it somewhere here. Magic touch. So you would use this, you would click on the chest and you know, it, you would proc one of the lights. But the thing is, to open the chest, you need three different characters to do it. It's kind of a hassle. You have to find chests, you know, it takes a while. It's not my recommended method, but if you're max level and you don't want to do the other methods, this is the best method for you. Or the second method, which is the uh, talent, spiritual retriever or elemental retriever on your pets. It's essentially a talent that you can manifest on a pet, but you do need talent tokens to unlock it, which is very tedious in my opinion. But once you have this talent on the pet, when you open a wooden chest, you know, there's a chance you get the spellament for that respective world that you found the chest in. But here's the problem with that. There is a constraint. It has a five minute cooldown and there is a way to make this more efficient by having a pet with, let's say you're looking for elemental spellaments, right? And you know, you, you don't want to level up a new character for the third method. What you can do is you can have the characters that you already have. If you have like three or four characters, you can make three or four pets with the elemental retriever uh, talent manifested on all of those pets. And what you can do is the cooldown, the five minute cooldown is actually character correspondence. So you can open it on one character, go on your other character and open another chest on that character. You can do it this way. And here's the good part. Once you unlock the elemental retriever talent on one pet, it'll be unlocked for every single pet that you make you know what I mean? Like once you unlock that talent for a certain pet, you won't have to unlock it again, which is really nice. But unlocking it is really hard and that five minute constraint is pretty bad. And you know, if you don't have a lot of characters, it can be very inefficient. Now here's the good part. This is the third step that I would recommend and is my preferred step. You know, I farmed all my spellments this way is to make a separate character and level that character up to Mushu or Dragon Spire. For example, Mushu drops spellments from Thunder Snake to Stormzilla, only rank one through five, and Dragonspire drops ranks two to six. So Dragon, so you can't get Thunder Snake uh, spellments from Dragonspire, and you can't get Triton spellments from Mushu, right? So I mean, it's respective for each school. You know what I mean? Like rank one through five. So Blood Bat Troll. So what I would do is see what spellment you need. Do you need the rank one spellment? Do you need Thunder Snake? Do you need Blood Bat? Do you need Frost Beetle? You know what I mean? Do you need any of those spellments? If you don't, then level up your character up to Dragon Spire. Don't finish Dragon Spire. Level up to Dragon Spire. And what you're going to do is you're going to farm a boss there, which I'll show later in the video. But first things first, you're going to see what spellments you need. If you need Thunder Snake, you're going to stop at Mushu. What you're going to do is you're going to farm the bosses that I'll put up. I'll put up a, a visual right now to show you what I mean by the bosses. It shows you what bosses drop, which spellments for each world. But I would ignore uh, the first few arcs, uh, first few worlds because I don't think they give you enough. I think Mushu and Dragon Spire are most effective. They give you a higher number and you can get more, you can cover more ground. And plus, it doesn't take that long to get to Mushu. It takes like four to five hours. So first things first, you want to figure out, do you need the rank one spellman? If you don't, quest the Dragon Spire and farm rank two to six spellaments. You know, the ones you need, right? Obviously. But if you do, I would say farm one through five in Mushu, then go to Dragon Spire and farm rank two to six. It sounds inefficient, but you get extra leftover spellaments, you know, if you want to, if you want them on your other characters. But I doubt anybody needs rank one spellaments. So I would personally say quest up to Dragon Spire. And once you're in Dragon Spire, you're going to farm a certain boss for the spellaments. All right. And I'm going to show you what the boss is now. 
All right, guys. So once you have your new character uh, leveled up to Dragon Spire, you're going to come to the Grand Chasm and you're going to go down here all the way from the top uh, area where you get in. And this is the boss you're going to fight. You're going to go in here, go in the sigil and you're going to find it. You're going to find Vasic Ashweaver. And he doesn't have that much health. It's like 5.8k, I think. And you know, with a high level friend, it should be an easy kill. Even by yourself, it should be an easy kill because you could just faint up, you know. It's a solo boss. There's no minions. Just faint up, blade up, kill him. But this is who you're going to fight for the spiritual spellments. Now I'm going to show you who you're going to fight for the elemental. So for the elemental spellments, oh, by the way, guys, the balance spellments, they drop from either of the bosses. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter which one you fight. So if you're a balance, you're, you know, you're in luck. But for the elemental spell elements, you're going to come to the crucible and you're going to come to this gem right here. You come from the star, you see her, the NPC, and you just go straight down here. You know, you'll know from the quest and you just hit this pedestal and Boris Blackrock will spawn. He'll drop 14 of any of the elemental and balance spell elements. Same for Vasic. You just farm those guys and that's how you get your rank two to six, two to six ele uh, spell elements. But you're probably wondering, you know, like, how am I going to do this? It's going to take a while, but I still think this is the best way because they're solo bosses and you can feign up and kill them. And, you know, and this process will be even faster if you're doing it with friends, you know, maybe a friend who has a max level that can help you and, you know, help you kill these quicker and quicker and quicker. You know, there are ways to make this more efficient, but, you know, there's another thing you can do. You can actually power level a character and, for example, you can, you need a friend for this. You need a friend. So if you have a max level friend, what you can do is you can have them teleport you into different dungeons and do the dungeon and you'll get the XP for it and you won't have to do any quests. It's a power leveling method. I'll make a video on it soon. But basically, for example, right, I have a character. I have a storm character. He's level 63 and he's actually only in Mushu. This is his main quest. Uh, talk to Hideo Kibo in Yoshihiro Temple. This is a level 30 ish world and he's in this world. And what I do is I farm the Mushu spell elements in that world. I just enchant the temp with my Gargantuan and just farm the Mushu bosses, one shot them. And he's actually only in Mushu because spell elements aren't level based. They're progression based, meaning like you need to be in a certain world. So if you have a friend that can teleport you into dungeons, you can actually be like level 60, level 70, 80, 90 in Dragon Spire or in Mushu. So for example, if I needed a rank two to six spell elements, I would um, take this character uh, finish Mushu on it quickly because right I already have enchants I already have tempest I can crit you know all of that stuff right I would take it to dragon spire and I would farm Boris and Vasek and I would get all the spell elements and it would be easy because I'm power leveled up and that's an efficient way you know you don't need to do this I'll make a video and show you guys how to do it if you do have a friend the basically the method is farming Boris and farming Vasek just kill them over and over again until you have all the spell elements you need Keep in mind, you can't finish Dragon Spire. You need to be in Dragon Spire while you're doing this because spell elements are progression based, not level locked. So if you finish Dragon Spire, you can't get spell elements from Dragon Spire anymore. So what you're going to do is you're going to farm Vasek and Boris Blackrock over and over again. Have a friend help you. Maybe you could do it yourself too. you know, double faint blade up twice, a nice monstrous enchanted hit and they should die. This is the most efficient way to farm spell elements and I think this is the best way you can do cantrips that's very inefficient you can do elemental retriever spiritual retriever, spiritual retriever but it's a hassle to unlock that talent have it on different pets and the five minute cooldown so guys i think this is the best way to do it and you know good luck on your farming all right guys so a really quick way to make sigil farming efficient especially if you have a friend who has a max level or you have a separate account you know your brother's account your sister's account friend's account that you're using and you know, you have a max level on it to help you farm on your character. So let's say this character, this window that I'm on right now, the window on the right is the uh, account that's farming the spell element. What you're going to do is you're, you're both going to go into sigil. You know, you have the hitter window on the left, the character that's going to get the spell elements on the right. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into the sigil. This works for sigil based uh, bosses for Boris Blackrock. You know, you just hit the crystals, right? That's pretty easy. But for sigil based bosses, you can do this. So what's going to happen is the character that's farming the spell element is going to go in. Then the hitter is going to go in. And what you're going to do is you're going to cast your faint on the, you know, the character that's the noob character that's not hitting. And on the max level, you're going to enchant your spell and you're going to use it. 
And what actually happens is once the turn starts, the game registers all the spells being like going through. So what you can do on the hitter account is you're going to escape quit on the hitter account and you're going to start going into the sigil while the animations are going off on the account that has the, that's the character where, you know, you're going to form spell elements. So the hitter account will be in the sigil. So once these animations finish, what you can do is you can be ready for the next fight right here and let's let it run. You know, the animations are finishing up while the hitter is waiting already in another uh, fight. So what you're going to do is once that's done, you're going to teleport to your hitter character on the noob character. Obviously, and you're going to go in same thing, throw up your faint, you know, throw up your faint, use your hit and then log out again. So enchant my hit just to show you again, use the hit on the hitter. On your noob character, use your faint, escape quit on your hitter character, hit play and start going to the sigil again. And it'll be ready just like last time, man. You know, this is so much more efficient. You save like 20 seconds. It might be a little more tedious. You do need a second account, but you know, it's just a quick little tip. I just want to say I didn't come up with this tip. I saw it on a Reddit post where Farrick said something about it and I just started doing it. It's really efficient. I'll put credits in the description. But yeah, guys, you should definitely do this for sigil beast bosses, you know, for Boris, he's right there. Just hit the crystal and you'll get what you need. But yeah, guys, uh, this was the video on how to get spell elements. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Like and subscribe.